Today I'm going to see if this $80 Portland pressure washer sold by Harbor Freight is up to the task of tackling the old chipping paint on our Carnival Ride restoration. Hey, it's Pete. Welcome back to the workshop. Today we're heading back outside to work on the King Supersonic Rocket Ride. So this ride has a lot of old chipping paint and it really doesn't take too much just to knock it off. I mean a lot of chipping old paint. I'm counting at least four layers. The most recent was yellow, then two different shades of blue, and finally brown underneath that. Although the brown might just be a primer. I need to get this loose paint off so that I can refinish the ride, and ideally, I'd love to just drive it over to the car wash and blast it off, but I don't think the owner would appreciate me filling his wash bay with thousands of little yellow and blue paint chips. And besides, at this point, the trailer is not street legal anyways. There are a lot of different methods I could try to get this paint off of here, and I may end up trying all of them. But sticking with the car wash idea, I decided to give a pressure washer a try. Now, I didn't want to spend a lot. I have made it to this point in my life with using a pressure washer maybe two or three times, so spending a lot of money didn't seem like a great investment for me. On the other hand, and I wasn't sure how long this project was going to take, so I didn't want to rack up a lot of charges with a rental. I found this $80 pressure washer at Harbor Freight and decided that it was worth a try. Now, one thing to keep in mind right up front with this particular unit is it has a 20% restocking fee. So if you purchase it, take it home, don't like it for any reason, want to return it, you're not going to be getting 100% of your money back. Now, of course, it does have a warranty, and if there's something physically wrong with it, they will replace it. My guess is this is just to prevent people from borrowing a washer for a few hours and returning it. At the very least, you're going to be paying a 20% rental fee. Assembly was quick and involved attaching the handle with four screws and pushing a hook into place. The manual mentioned attaching the wheels, but they were already on when I pulled it from the box. The high pressure hose is attached to the bottom front of the unit, then the handle is attached to the hose, and the wand goes in with a quarter turn connector. Finally, you attach a garden hose to the rear of the pressure washer and turn everything on. The first time I powered it up, I was a bit underwhelmed. Then I realized there was still air in the system. It takes quite a while to purge all the air out of the pump. Until you do that, uh, it cavitates and you can hear the pump load increase once the air is gone and feel more power in the wand. I recorded some video that demonstrates the sound the pump makes when there's air in it and that will be coming up a little bit later. Although it doesn't blast the paint away as quickly as I would have liked, it does seem to do a reasonably good job of tackling dirt, moss, and mildew, so it would probably work great for general cleanup like deck washing. My next attempt was to use the power washer in conjunction with some citrus strip, sort of a one-two punch. This was a big improvement. I got a bit more serious with the citrus strip, applying it a bit heavier and wrapping it with plastic wrap. This allows the stripper to stay wet longer and be more effective. I allowed that to sit for 24 hours before attempting to wash it again. The adjustment on the end of the wand is a bit hokey in my opinion. By turning the tip you can go from a stream to a fan pattern but it does this by bringing in what looks like stainless steel fingers to essentially deflect the stream. This is similar to just putting your thumb over the end of a garden hose. 
it's just not the same as a nozzle engineered to produce a 15 or 25 degree fan pattern. And this brings me to another point. Harbor Freight provides a wand and more recent versions include a foam gun, but this wand does not accept interchangeable nozzles. However, with a $20 visit to Amazon, I was able to rectify that. This adapter has a connector that matches the handle of the wand, and the other end has a connector for quick connect fittings. For $20, I thought it was worth a try, and I'll leave a link to it down below in the video description. This adapter allows you to then purchase any number of power washer accessories that have quarter inch quick connect fittings. The advertisement on Amazon mentions having to possibly file down these two ears to fit the Harbor Freight wand, but it fit mine perfectly. Sometimes Harbor Freight will sell the same product under multiple part numbers. The item appears the same, but internally they can be different and even come from different suppliers, and this may be where this confusion comes from. For the record, the pressure washer I purchased had a model number of 63255, and again, this adapter fit perfectly with no leaks and no modifications required. So what are my final thoughts? For $80, I think it's a good value. I've read some poor reviews, though, so your mileage may vary. The main complaint seems to be not having enough pressure, and I can't help but wonder if they're just not getting all the air out of the system. I used this pressure washer on the concrete pad that my workshop sits on, and I thought it did a great job. I also thought it did a reasonable job of removing the paint from the carnival ride, especially when combined with the citrus strip, but it's obviously not the right tool for the job. I've read other reviews that talk about catastrophic pump failure, and if something like that happens down the road, I'll be sure to update this. I'll do a teardown and see what might have gone wrong, and if it's repairable, because that's what I do around here. You're not gonna go into the pressure washing business with this unit, but I think it's fine for weekend jobs around the house. As far as the kitty ride goes, I'm gonna continue to pick away at the paint in between other jobs. I think I'm gonna tackle the motor next, getting it cleaned up, getting the bearings replaced. So click that subscribe button down below and follow along as this ride comes back to life. And if you wanna catch up with other parts of this project, click those links to the left and I'll catch you over there.